Hello folks. In this screencast, we are going to customize the Quality of Life Dashboard version 3 for another municipality. And we're going to be using Wake County, North Carolina as our example. If you've customized Quality of Life Dashboard version 2 for a different municipality, this will not be a whole lot different, although there are a lot more settings you can tweak so you don't have to edit a lot by hand. So let's get started. First thing I did, I did this ahead of time so you wouldn't have to watch NPM install stuff, is I went to the Quality of Life Dashboard version 3 and cloned the repo. Then I just ran these commands. These commands get the repo out. It gets Mecklenburg County's data set, which includes our data and configuration. And then I do NPM install, and then I build the site, and then I generate the data, then I run NPM start, and off it goes and you end up with something like this. Before you get started customizing the dashboard for your own data, just go ahead and just run npm start and launch it with Mecklenburg County's data to make sure everything installed and is working correctly. So, we did that. Happy day. Now let's start customizing our data. If you go over to the data repository, on GitHub, it will have a bunch of instructions on all the different things you need to do. In principle, there's four things you need. You need your geography, and that's going to be a GeoJSON file. You need your data, that'll be in CSV files. You'll need your metadata, which will be in Markdown. And then you'll need to update the configuration files for the different settings for your site. Let's start out with geography. Now, geography uh, is going to be in GeoJSON, and it's to be WGS84, and it needs one field in it, and that is the ID, ID lowercase, and it's a string field. And that is the unique identifier for each of your geographic units, be they tracks or neighborhoods or zip codes or whatever you're breaking things into. So here's Wake Counties, and, and this is census tracts, and you can see, see if I can Remember how to, we've got an ID, which is the census tract number, and I'm not using the census geo ID because they're long and ugly. I'm just using census tract. For GeoJSON, you'll, a GeoJSON file, the smaller you can get it, the better it is. Um, it's better for transport across the wire and it's faster to render. So you want to simplify it to just above the level where it would drive you nuts. And you need to use a tool that will recognize topology when it simplifies. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with slivers in between your polygons, which is, is no good. There's different ways to do that. I use QGIS built with grass and the V generalized simplify from grass. If you have grass, you can just use that too. And you'll just grab your layer, and since this is in WGS84, you could just do 0 0.0001 is good for our latitude and longitude. And it will simplify the data and preserve the, the topology. So you won't end up with slivers. After that, you take your data layer, you save it, as GeoJSON and bump down the coordinates precision to something like six because you're not going to need more significant figures than that. Your data is not more accurate than that. And that will make a very small file. Our GeoJSON file for Wake County is 264 kilobytes, which is outstanding. And it'll tell you where to save that. You put it right in the root of the data directory as geography.geojson.json. Change the extent to JSON because unless you've messed with your web server's MIME types file, it's not going to know what GeoJSON is. And it's, after all, it is just a JSON file. So there's our geography. Now let's look at our data. Your data is going to be in the CSV files this up a little bit in the metric folder in your data repository and the type of CSV file you have will depend on the type of calculation you're doing 
The dashboard does calculations when more than one polygon is selected, so it needs to know how to handle that. And there are three different types. There's a sum. That just means when you have more than one polygon selected, it adds those numbers together. And you'll end up with an R, your metric ID, dot CSV, R for raw. Your calculation type could be a mean. That means when it has more than one polygon selected, it averages those values. And that's a normalized value, so it'll be N, the metric number, dot CSV. Or you can do a weighted. And weighted is like a weighted mean, weighted average. So for something like population density, you would give it the raw population as R, the metric ID dot CSV, and whatever you are, are weighting and, and calculating that by. So if you're doing people per acre as a population density, your R value is population. For your acreage, you would do D, the metric number dot CSV. And that'll do a weighted average when you have more than one thing selected. And we're going to use all three of these. We've got three metrics we're going to do. The first is the population. The second is population density, which first will be a sum. Second will be a weighted. And the third is the percentage of young people without a high school diploma, which will be our mean. And our data will look like this. There's a column for ID, and that will be your identifier. There is Y underscore and the year for every year you have. And if you have no value for that year, you just leave that empty. So if there's no value here, it would look like this. That's it. Uh, some things to be careful so, and, and some gotchas. Uh, if you're dealing with CSV in a spreadsheet, make sure it treats your ID as a string, particularly if you're using number like identifiers. Here we're using census tracts. Wake County has a census tract that has a significant trailing zero and if it treats it as a number it's going to lose that and your stuff won't match up. And make sure your ID column, that's how the file is sorted, and make sure all of your headers are lowercase. Now I've actually built uh, very recently, as in within minutes, some some data checking for this because I found out nine times out of ten when people have problems customizing the dashboard it's because their data isn't quite right. So if you go into that data repository uh, and do an npm install there. If you don't want to run tests that data repository doesn't need anything installed. Run npm install there and then you can run npm run test and that's going to run data tests with uh, uh, tape and tap spec and you can see you have 12 tests that ran and they all ran successfully. What it's checking here is to make sure your CSV files are, are sorted, the IDs are identical with your geography, which checks for sorting and make sure you don't have anything missing, and it checks to make sure for the calculation type for each metric you have the correct file there. So that's handy. Now we've got our data in, let's look at our metadata. Your metadata is going to be a markdown file. And the markdown file is, is basically like this, and it has some heading tags, and you can put stuff underneath that. It is very important that you have the heading tags in this order and don't introduce any more H2 or H3s because that's what it uses to chop up the data when it gets to the client. So you can put those different data elements in different places. You can put in an H4, you can put in anything, you can put in markdown images, you can put in tables, you can put in links, anything you want. But make sure that H2 and H3 tags stay the same. I've taken some of our metadata and the metadata is just m, the, the ID of the metric dot md for markdown. And I have just changed the short description for it or the first tag under h2. 
and left the rest of the same because it's metadata and just life is life is too short. Plus you'll have stuff you can see. That's what our metadata looks like. Now we have to change the site configuration. First, the site configuration is in your data folder under config, and there's four files we need to touch. First is data. And you can see all the options here you have for different stuff. And basically, your, your key is M and the ID of the metric, and this is just an ID number. Then each metric will have the metric and that same ID number. A little redundant, I know, but it's, it, it comes in useful later. What category you want to put this particular metric in. Label is basically like the units for, so for in population, we're counting people. Label is optional. In fact, for this one, I don't really think we need it. Title population and the type of calculation is sum. For our second one, it's still under demographics and it's going to be population density. Our label is people per acre. Notice we're doing a raw label. If your raw number, you want to show it as well, not just the weighted calculation, but the raw number, which in our case is people, you can put in a raw label value and what that particular thing is. And it will show that. If you don't want to show that, then just don't have a raw label argument there, and it won't show it. For our third metric, M3, we're going to have a different type, education. We don't have a data label, but we have a suffix. And suffix is a short thing that can go after the number. In this case, it's a percentage. We also have a, you could put in a prefix for something like a dollar sign. Here's our title, and this is going to be type mean. So we have three metrics. We've got them configured. Save that. Hopefully it didn't break anything there. Now our map configuration. And each of these configuration files will have some documentation on what everything is. I'm changing the style to OSM Liberty, which is included, which is a, a great style from the folks behind OSM to vector tiles. The styles that Mec style that Mecklenburg uses doesn't cover like the planet for the sources for the vector tiles. So you probably want to change that to something else. You can use a map box style. You can use whatever you want here, your own custom style. We're going to set up zoom levels and the embed map and the regular dashboard have different levels in case you want to adjust it to geography slightly based on the size of the, the shape of your geography and the, the size of your map. We're going to have where we center it. Your, and I've changed this to Wake County, about the middle of the county. Maximum bounds, so people don't go accidentally zooming out to you know, see the entire planet. A min zoom, so they don't go out too far. And the rest of this stuff, you can pretty much ignore. These last two arguments, one of the nice things about Mapbox GL is you can insert layers anywhere in the layer stack. So what we're saying here is make the neighborhoods selected, which is our outline of something selected, before the labels. So it'll appear on top of everything else and underneath the labels. We're just giving it a layer to stick this under. And same thing for our neighborhoods, which is the polygon fill. We're putting it right under the building. Now, if these layer names don't exist, in your style, it's just going to put these layers on top. It's not going to error out. But if you have different layer names and these don't work, you just figure out in your style where you want to put these layers under, and that's what you put in there. There's our map configuration. Select groups, you don't have to use. What a select group is, is say you have a certain number collection of polygons that are from a jurisdiction or some area you're interested in, and you want to make it easy for your someone to select those and go right there. And we'll just put in one here for fun. We're going to go my groups. We're going to name this group group. Not very creative. And these are strings. I'm actually, the way I have it in this file, I'm just mapping them to strings, but we'll make them actual strings. So and we'll go 501, which is a tract, and 503. There is no 502. I don't know what happened to that guy. Hey, there's a fire. 
All right. Let's see. So we got that group, and we will get rid of the rest of these. And if you don't want to use groups at all, just set set select groups equal to null. All right, that looks good. And our last thing we're going to change. This is our site.js, and this affects how the site's laid out and where link goes and whether stuff is there or not. So, and again, there's a description of what this stuff is, but it's not self-explanatory. Instead of NPAs, we're using tracks. I'm going to say tracked. Now, what is a tracked? Uh, census made this, nobody knows how. At least I don't know how. Google Analytics key. Uh, any keywords, keywords and author just go in your site's uh, meta tags title. We'll call this the Rally Compass. Uh, description goes also in the meta tags. Now we haven't set up a QO, uh, quality of life embed site. And we haven't, so I'm going to set that to null. We haven't set up a report site, so I'm going to set that to null. These will just remove those links. Uh, dashboard URL doesn't really do anything here. We'll just leave it. Contact form we don't have set up either. So I'm going to set that to null. What links are, links are down in your footer. And you can change those wherever you want. I'm just going to leave them to where they are now. So now we've done our site configuration. So we've pretty much got it. We're going to go back to our main folder here. And we're going to regenerate the data since we read the data, npm run data gen again. And then we're going to rebuild our site since we changed the configuration information. pm run build. And with any luck, when we run npm start now, it is going to come up with Wake County. If it doesn't, I will be quite disappointed. Hey, there's Wake County. Now I might go back if, it, if I were doing the site and change the center and the zoom a little bit because it's an odd shaped county like all of Mecklenburg's or all of North Carolina's are. We can select our polygons. Neato. We can go see the population. Notice this is a sum, so we have three selected, and it's adding these together. Wake County gained a lot of people from 2000-2010. Go to Population Density. Now, Population Density is doing a weighted average here. And because we gave it a raw label, it is also putting the total down here in the description, which is kind of neat. We can change years. We can go back to our high school diploma stuff. Notice this only has one year, so you don't see the trend chart there. We can select by a tract, which we have our tooltip for. Let's see, you can go to 501. And we remember we made a group with two different tracks. We can put that there. And now we've got those two different polygons selected. And there's downtown Raleigh. There's a convention center that I'll be going to in February for the conference. Yay! And here's the metadata. And this is stuff I didn't adjust from Mecklenburg's because the person that writes our metadata does a bang up job and metadata makes me tired. And down here toward the bottom, these are these where those links come out from our site configuration I was talking about. So now we've got a working dashboard and everything's going good. One other thing you might want to do when you set this up, and there's instructions on this in the dashboard. The search is set to do a couple different things by default. And only the search for your geog through your geography is going to work because address and zip code is only set up for Mecklenburg. What you can do is go into that view file, and it gives you some instructions on this. Search.view. You can change the uh, documentation here. We'll just get rid of address and zip code. 
Then you can scroll down to the search method and just comment out anything you're not using. So this code is still here and you can use it as a guide to set up additional searches of your own. We save that, we still have a live reload server going. So it's going to go back out to the site. And notice now we're just down to attract. And we can still search for our thing. That's it. That's customizing the dashboard for uh, a different locality. It's uh, not too hard. There are different things you have to do, but once you get it set up, it, it runs pretty well. A lot of things you used to have to edit by hand, like the site title and so forth. Uh, you can just set in a configuration and that stuff happens for you. Now, notice on this site, since we didn't have our report and embed set up or our contact form, our report uh, button is hidden and so are those two things you would normally see on the site. There's our report on Mecklenburg site along with a contact form and the embed map form. If you set those things up, just put the URL of those things in your configuration file and that stuff will automatically fill out for you. All right, that was customizing the dashboard for a different locality. Good luck and if you have any feedback or anything, pull requests are always welcome. Bye-bye.